Welcome to Ascending DC channel. We are an AWS certified partner to provide cloud consulting and technical support to clients who are looking for cloud solutions to tackle the challenge in their day-to-day -day operations. This video is one of the many short videos we are producing. In each of them, we are going to demo and explain when used for AWS practice that can be used to improve the efficiency and accuracy of your work. All these tricks have been proved effective in our client's success. If you are a project manager, DevOps, architect, software engineer, or just looking for useful cloud practice, this video is made for you. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Hi, everyone. In our last video, we talked about how to ingest encrypted or non-encrypted data into Snowflake. Link will be in the description below. One of the engineers in our team like to share how to process and transform the data in a Snowflake as a sequence. Celeste, go ahead. Hi, my name is Celeste, a data engineer in Ascending. So in this video, I'm going to share you how to do data transformation with Snowflake Snowpark. Uh, first, for the people who may not know uh, Snowpark, Snowpark is a set of APIs that we can use it to develop Java or Scala application. At the same time, we can leverage the strong compute power of Snowflake without moving the data. By the time of this video, Snowpark only supports Scala and Java, but uh, Snowflake proposed that they may launch Python API in a few months. Snowpark provides data frame API. So uh, data frame is a major data structure we are going to use in Snowpark. It's pretty much like data frame in Spark. It's a table object that we can call different methods and do transform onto it. It's very intuitive and more readable than SQL query. The syntax is also more user-friendly for a software developer uh, whose major language is not SQL. Um, instead of enabling programmers to develop application in languages like they like, uh, Snowpark gave us many other benefits outperforming than SQL. We can use Snowpark to build actual testable data application and do CICD easier. Uh, and it's also more user-friendly for developers to debug and do iterative developing and take advantage of compiling language like Scala and Java so that we can catch most of the error at compiling before actually run the program. Now, let's move to the demo part. So uh, in this demo, demo, we're going to use two data sets, city back, uh, the trips table and the city back, and the weather. We can combine these two tables to analyze how city back data react with uh, the weather changes. As you can see, as you can see the weather table, it is uh, semi-structured data. So um, first of all, let's see how to set up a Scala dev environment in an IDE. First of all, we need to create a new project, a Scala project. So we choose Scala and use SVT as the builder. For the people who never created a Scala project before, you may need to install Scala plugin first. And just click next and choose the versions for JDK, SVT, and Scala and create uh, the project. Once we have a new Scala project, we need to add Snowpark uh, into our project dependency. Um, one thing to note is that Snowpark now only supports Scala 2.12 version and its earlier versions. So please make sure you set up correct Scala version here. And I am using the version of uh, 2.12.13. And we need to add a uh, lot add library dependency for Snowpark like that. Okay, uh, let's look at the code. So here uh, I create a class uh, which will generate a Snowpark uh, session so that we can connect to the Snowflake database as a client. Um, then in the main function, 
uh, we can create data frames from table. Now we have two data frames, uh, trip data frames and weather data frame. By the way, in Snowpark, we can also pass a SQL statement to query the data without creating data frame, uh, like what we did in the line 29. But it's not recommended because um, that way we didn't take advantage of the benefits uh, that Scala program gave it to us. Okay, let's move on. Um, here from line 33 to line 35, it shows us how to figure the roles based on certain columns values. Uh, in my example, uh, I filter out the data based on year and selected four columns here. Next, uh, let's see how Snowpark uh, queries uh, same structure data, which is the weather table in our demo. Um, in order to uh, refer to the certain field in a semi structure, uh, for example, JSON data, we need to use a column method to chain the field names to traverse a path to a specific uh, to a specific field or elements. And please note, uh, the field value is case sensitive. Next, um, I will go a little bit further to see how we can implement. Uh, the join and window function with Snowpark. Um, here, what I would do is to join the two data frames based on time. If the city back trip start time is between observation start and end time. To get the observation end time, uh, I use a window function lead uh, to give us the next observation time of the weather. Once we got this uh, end time, now we are able to join with a uh, trip data frame uh, when the trip start time is between uh, the weather observation time and its end time. Next, um, after we have, have this join data frame, uh, we can do a simple aggregation based on weather. We can calculate the total duration, uh, number of trips, uh, and average duration uh, in different weather. We just simply group by uh, weather and do the aggregations. So this will be the final table that we want to uh, uh, save it and store it into a snowflake table. And here in line 75, we write this table in snowflake, uh, in the snowflake. Okay, uh, let's run the program. You can see uh, all the intermediate results are printed out. Um, and here is the final table uh, that we want. Okay, now let's run the program to see the final results. You can see before we only have one table here is trips. And when the program's finished, we should have another table, um, which is the final table that we want after drawing the two tables. This is the final table we want. Let's refresh the page. Okay, we got this final table here, which is exactly same as the result I printed up, print here. We can see we gather the data from two tables, weather and trips. And we write this final result into a new table in Snowflake. And also finally, uh, don't forget to close the session when your application is finished. So um, this demo simulates how a data engineer could manipulate data in a data pipeline uh, leveraging the computing power inside Snowflake with Snowpark. Since we have an application now, the last thing in our demo uh, I want to show you is uh, how to package the application as a Docker image so that we can publish the image uh, to, for example, AWS ECR and deploy the application in a production environment. Uh, I'll use uh, 
SBT as a tool to package uh, this, the Scala project. Uh, we can add uh, Docker capacities to SBT by including the SBT native packager uh, plugin in the project plugins SBT file. And then we can enable the plugin uh, here in build SBT file. Then we can run uh, SBT Docker publish local. And when it's finished, we will have a new image. The image name, it would be a uh, Sydney Snow Park demo. See, we have this image. Okay, let's back to slides. Here is an example of that how we deploy Snow Park application uh, with AWS services. The architecture is provided by a Snowflake partner, PH data. So basically what we need to do is first we package the application in a container uh, like we did in previous demo and push the image to AWS ECR and config the AWS batch job with the image in the ECR repository. Um, when we run the job, we need to consider uh, network connection issues between Snowflake and uh, AWS cloud accounts. So uh, VPC connection settings like private link may be required. Every time we push a new code in our ETL scripts, your CICD pipeline will trigger a container build and a new batch process will should pull, pull the latest image to run the ETL job. Thank you very much for watching this video. We also have another video about how to ingest data from S3. Please take a look if you are interested in Snowflake. If you have any questions about Snowpark, feel free to email support at ascendingdc.com to talk to us on the call. I will see you in the next video. Please leave your comments, questions, critics to us so we know you are watching. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Ascending DC, and stay tuned for our next video. See you next week.